Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tendulkar. With me is Sonal Bhutra. FMCG major Marico has reported an inline set of earnings in the third quarter, hopes to end the year with a margin of 18 to 19 percent. We'll get chatting with Sogata Gupta, MD and CEO of Marico, to discuss their outlook. Uh, how has demand been so far in Q4? We're nearly done with half of the quarter. What are the trends? I think it's too early, but what I can tell you is that I think the worst is over as far as inflation is concerned. Now, we strongly believe that there's a significant correlation between inflation and demand for FMCG because obviously whenever there is high food inflation, especially at the bottom of pyramid and in rural, people either downgrade or titrate. I think the second thing which has happened for us especially also is that we have finally got the right pricing uh, because of the fact that there was significant volatility in our input costs, there is much more stability. So all I can say as far as uh, rural consumption is concerned, I think the worst is over. Uh, we are seeing a very gradual recovery. The recovery will not be, I think, uh, very sharp, but there will be a gradual recovery. And we are extremely hopeful that our growths, both in earnings and in volume, will be better this quarter than what it was in Q3. It will gradually improve again. Okay, gradual improvement is what you're expecting. But Mr. Gupta, if we look at value-added hair rolls, that continues to remain weak on account of soft demand. So are you looking at price cuts there given the raw material environment currently? I think uh, there are two obviously components of that drive input costs as far as value-added hair oils is concerned. One is crude because there are a lot of crude link products. And the second is vegetable oils. Well, vegetable oil stabilized. If you look at a YOI crude, it's still, you know, pre-Ukraine, it's still at a slightly elevated level. So I think uh, what will happen is obviously we have to optimize between providing value to the consumer at the same time recover some margins. So we will try to play out that. And I obviously strongly believe that at the end of the day, volume growth and maintaining market share is critical. Margins always come. And therefore, we'll play that optimized game. It's too early to take a call on what do we do on pricing. Wherever we have got a significant deflation, which is in our edible portfolio, um, coconut oil and safola, there we have taken price drops. Okay. Could you give us an indication what kind of margins are you targeting in FI24? You've already given us the margin guidance for this year, 18 to 19%. What could next year look like? What would be the margin triggers? If we look at a sequential improvement in our margins, it's happening sequentially and YOI. And if there are no what I call black swan events, like the one which happened, uh, you know, which is post-Ukraine, uh, commodities are okay and our cost management programs continue to you know be aggressive as usual uh, it will be definitely 19 percent plus now the only thing we have to watch out for in some of our countries and international business there has been currency depreciation but i think we have been relatively resilient on it but as you know currency depreciation leads to both losses at the you know, in translation losses as well as some kind of erosion in the country itself. But I think uh, the way trends are, I think 19% plus is very much possible. Okay, that is about margins. But can you tell us about your international business? What would the sustainable growth rate in that particular segment be? I think the international business has a medium term aspiration of delivering double digit constant currency growth in spite of all the headwinds in some of our markets, which are which is a combination of inflation, currency depreciation and consumption, you know, stresses. I think our international business has been extremely resilient and uh, we hope to continue that pace. I think uh, in most of the markets, we have a extremely robust business based on strong fundamentals. And uh, as a result, I think we are one of the very few companies which have been delivering a very predictable, sustainable uh, results quarter after quarter. So I think uh, double digit constant currency growth is something which we should be able to deliver. Double digit constant currency revenue growth in the international business. So you've grown both your food and digital business revenue to scale now. What is their contribution to the profitability of the company? I think, uh, as you know, food and digital was the two big drivers of our diversification agenda. 
uh, and we are on track to achieve broadly the numbers which we had set uh, set aside and uh, between food digital and uh, the premium portfolio i think we will be we will have in the next two years a mid teen contribution which was sub 5 in 2020 so it has been a dramatic shift and food i believe has been a very successful example of how do you drive the total addressable market using a under leverage but strong brand like safola i think as it as it gets scale and uh, we are starting our journey to drive profitability in the first instance let me tell you the food makes higher gross margin than safola edible oil which itself is good because it's a creative the diversification and as it scales up other than the cost structure on food there are also potential for halo effect on advertising which leads to you know lower total ANP system cost between Safola edible oil and Safola food. As far as digital is concerned, I think what helps us is that uh, I believe that the ecosystem is little more rational with respect to ANP spends and therefore the you know, customer acquisition cost as well as the A costs are coming down in the system. And therefore both these, now that it has got some sort of scale, there'll be significant focus on improving and having a much more robust path to profitability. Okay, you're talking about path to profitability, but Mr. Gupta, by when will these segments get profitable? Look at food business, I think our core, which is the oats and masala oats makes good money. So it's, I think it's, I think as I said that we have now with our scale and our capability, there is a definitive path to profitability. And we are extremely confident that once each of the subcategories gets a critical mass, there is a different defined path to profitability. Okay, all right, Mr. Gupta, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through uh, the business outlook and analysis of quarter three numbers as well. That's the word coming in from Marico. Uh, by the way, we have Colte Patel's numbers at the bottom of your screen. Of course, that's the p &L number. And because of accounting recognition and uh, project revenue recognition as well, those numbers are looking lower. But they had given a quarterly operational update as well. And they had reported highest ever quarterly sales of 716 crore rupees in the quarter gone by. And that is something that they had given in the month of January as well. So for real estate companies, it's more important to look at their pre-sales and volumes as well, other than uh, apart from uh, the p &L, because that actually gives you a very volatile picture on a quarter on quarter basis as well so that's cold tip battle for you but with that we'll slip into a short break now uh, but as we do that here's some exciting news uh, the most coveted leadership awards are back cnbc tv 18 honors the visionaries behind outstanding businesses 